Hello? Hello, everyone. So uh, uh, I have not much time because I have a really a big number of slides, so I will go really fast about me. Uh, I'm Emmanuel. Uh, most of the time I'm writing, uh, I'm uh, in a company writing a software called Parsec, which has absolutely nothing to do with uh, the company doing uh, gaming. We choose the name at the same time, so yeah, that's kind of thing happen anyway. So uh, if you're interested in a really secure uh, open source uh, software with end-to-end -end encryption, you should check a look. It's in Python. All the source code is there. It's funny. Uh, anyway, I'm going to talk to you about something totally unrelated, which is voting. So I'm not an expert in voting in any way, but I talk a lot with researchers. And so basically what I understood is when you're, using, when you're talking about voting system, there is uh, multiple property that you have to evaluate. Uh, for instance, the more common one is uh, the ballot secrecy. So your voting, of course, your vote must be secret. But there is other things. For instance, uh, you should not be able to, um, to prove that you voted for somebody, because uh, otherwise you could uh, go and ask for and get money from uh, someone else because you voted for the right guy. Or maybe you could get your leg broken because you voted for the wrong guy. Uh, something else is uh, what they call auditability. So basically, uh, you need to be able to do uh, the ballot counting. And the ballot counting, it's better if there is a lot of different parties involved for doing the ballot counting. Uh, all this kind of thing. And anyway, uh, online voting is, I mean, the funny thing is all those property. They are not perfect when you do um, physical uh, voting, but it's kind of work. There is issue, but it's OK. Uh, with online voting, it makes things really, really, really complicated. Uh, basically, because here we can see there is a, like, a little Billy. Uh, he's a kid, and he understands what he's doing just by voting. He, he puts a physical proof of what he, want, what he wants to vote inside this uh, ballot box. But on the other hand, there is a server for online voting, and nobody has any idea what's going on. And at the end of the election, you have absolutely no physical proof of what happened. So if somebody is not happy with the election, it's really hard to, to tell what you should do. Uh, anyway, so in France, we have something which is called the CNIL, which is a commission, national commission of informatics. I mean, it's the translation in Wikipedia. I don't think it's right, but anyway. So basically, it's uh, the people who, who deal with, um, with uh, sorry, uh, data privacy. And uh, so they, they released uh, this thing. Uh, if you're not French speaker, uh, this is a really long title. But basically, it is some uh, recommendation uh, for um, online voting. So what you should, if you want to make a, a, a online voting, what you should or should not do. And uh, basically, what they say is, they are not really, uh, they don't say it's, uh, it's the best idea to do, uh, to do online voting for political election. And uh, the most important part of this thing, it's, it's only a recommendation. So basically, the CNIL say, yeah, you should do that, but if you don't do that, there is no legal implication. Uh, so basically, it means uh, that if you want to make uh, online voting in France, uh, there is, mm, uh, for what I understand, there is no legal obligation of anything. You can just develop your software, and it's uh, OK. Uh, so now we are going to talk about a company, which is called Neovot. Uh, this, called is ba this company is basically the main actor in, uh, in France for online voting. So they, I guess they got a lot of clients with uh, COVID-19, because plenty of people now want to vote uh, online. They work uh, for uh, the university, plenty of company, etc. And uh, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, they um, they have used the software has been used for um, the political election for the, the primary party election. So uh, that's when I, I start knowing them. Uh, so if we talk about their solution, their software, uh, the main issue with the software is it's a total black box. So there is no documentation, no white paper, nothing. Uh, what you see here is basically the only thing on the website which talk a bit about what they do, but it's the only thing you have, so it's uh, very few. Of course, you cannot see the source code. Uh, and as I said, yeah, there is a multiple um, primary uh, party who hold uh, some um, primary election. 
And uh, so all those elections were done with uh, new vote on the internet. Uh, yeah, so spoiler alert, uh, uh, I voted for the Green Party, and uh, so I, I got interested in the thing, and so I started auditing the, uh, the software, how it works, etc. and so I wanted to write an article. I talked about all my findings to NeoVot. They consider it wasn't a real finding, and uh, um, yeah, I just uh, was nagging about the thing, but I, I didn't find anything interesting. So anyway, uh, I met uh, Enka Blanchard, which is um, a French uh, researcher, she works at uh, CNRS, and so uh, together with uh, Joa and uh, Juliette, we wrote uh, a paper that got uh, released last month in, uh, in conference in France. And uh, so Neovot didn't seem to be really happy about it because uh, they tried to, to cancel the, the talk at the conference uh, with a legal action. So that, that didn't work, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I have to, to be faster because otherwise uh, you won't see the fun part. Uh, so I voted for, as I said, for the primary for the Green Party. So basically, uh, how it works, you, you you go on the website, you you do some stuff like you choose a password, then you go on the website for voting, and uh, you use uh, your cell phone with pin code for vote, etc. I won't go in detail. If you're more interested in this thing, there is another uh, talk, uh, another paper, sorry, about that. It's in French. If you don't read French, sorry. Uh, so at the end of the voting, you have this thing. Which uh, so it's uh, the, um, the, the last screen which said oh you voted uh, so we have a really white screen so when I took the screenshot uh, yeah that's it uh, and so if you don't see there is uh, this weird thing at the middle which is uh, a bit uh, red orange uh, which they call uh, proof of vote and so they said okay you voted and now there is this proof of vote keep it it's personal if you want to check that your vote have been uh, re is in inside the ballot box everything is right you should use that so. Okay, but uh, there was not much information about that, so I asked Neovot how it works, and they told me that you have to wait for the end of the election, and then you will uh, have uh, the stuff. So I went for the end of the election, uh, and then here's the result screen from the end of the election, and uh, you see there is uh, this, so they, they give you a, a website, and they say, okay, you can verify your, your vote going to this website and using this password. Uh, so the website is here, so it's a different website, uh, on the website, you put the address of the, um, the server you voted on, uh, you put the password, you put your proof of vote, and after that, you, you hit uh, validate, and uh, it crashed. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, yeah, it, it crashed, and uh, in fact, it timed out, and so you have to retry, and then retry, and then retry, and after some time, uh, it finally works, and so uh, here you have uh, the thing, so they say uh, everything is fine, the, the green uh, box is uh, saying, yeah, your proof of vote, proof of vote is working, and uh, if you see the result, it's the same that on Wikipedia. It's uh, the official one, so okay, everything fine. Uh, yeah, there is one thing funny that uh, I saw when uh, I did that is there is, this, there is this link for the source code. So I click it, I got uh, a PHP script which is the source code, and uh, so it's, it's really great because it means that you can uh, run the source code, the PHP script on your own computer, you don't have to trust the website for doing the check, so yeah, good. Um, so here is an example, oh, sorry, uh, the, the code is uh, copyrighted, I guess, so I cannot show everything, but I can show the little extract. Uh, the script is like uh, 4,500 lines. Uh, and so here is, uh, for instance, the code for the um, error handling, for uh, the error we saw. Uh, so we have uh, the ballot counting, the ballot counting takes a lot of time because there is encryption, etc. whatever. Uh, so we have this written code, if the written code is 98, then you store the stuff on the cache, and then you have this uh, written code, which is uh, one, and error point, which in 40 plus written code divided by 1,000, but if your case is two, three, five, and six, but not four, then error code is six, error point is 28, plus return code divided by 1,000. And uh, you have a break two, which is a PSP instruction to say you have to go outside of two loops. Okay, fine enough. So now, uh, what does this script do? Uh, so it, go, it goes on the website, it downloads two archives, uh, it uh, decrypts those archive with the password, and then it check your ballot, your, the proof of vote, and it counts the ballot. Okay. So first thing we are going to see is uh, this proof of vote. What is made of? So here is typically the proof of vote. It's a base 64 of something which is encrypted with AES. 
so symmetric encryption. Uh, yeah, that's symmetric encryption with hard-coded key. So uh, the key is inside the script. Uh, I ask uh, Neobot about that, and they say, it's fine. There is no security issue, because it's not for security, it's for padding. Uh, so let's talk about padding, uh, because, you know, AES, it's what they call uh, block encryption. So, so block encryption means you encrypt 32 octet, 32 bytes a time, and so if your last part is not 32 long, what do you do? You do padding. So in AES, there is this thing, which is called PKCS7, which do the, um, the padding. So the question is, uh, why not using PKCS7 instead of using uh, just AES? for doing the padding. It would be much more efficient. And it won't look suspicious as uh, sewing an hard-coded key. And anyway, what for? Because uh, the proof of what, why it should have to be uh, this side? We don't know because there is no documentation. And sorry, anyway, uh, all the data for all the generated uh, and, uh, proof of vote are all the same side. So yet again, anyway. Uh, so what's inside this proof of vote? It's five uh, SHA-512 ashes. So each one of them are for one vote. So there is like five votes in this proof of vote. Uh, so, why is it so why is it for that? It's because uh, the idea is what I told you before. Uh, when you got one proof of vote, you shouldn't be able to show for who you voted for. So there is your vote inside the proof of vote and four other votes. So you should not be able to say for who you voted for. Uh, you, the funny thing is, of course, there is no crypto signature, which means we can uh, we can do funny stuff, I'm uh, going to see. So anyway, uh, the format, just uh, really fast. As you see uh, on the, do I have my cursor? Yeah, here. You have uh, all the, the SHA ashes, you have some random parts, a header, and so the idea is uh, they do uh, CRC, so uh, redundancy control, so they do a checksum. Uh, and so for doing this checksum, they use uh, this, this variable, this constant, which is uh, called the paper. And the funny thing is uh, they concatenate it, and uh, it's PHP, so maybe you don't uh, see, but this is a string, but this is bytes, in fact. And so this looks like an uh, hexadecimal uh, string, but it's used directly here as bytes, so they concatenate bytes, which only contain hexadecimal characters. It's a bit weird, but I think they forget something here. Uh, anyway, so you have your uh, redundancy control, you uh, concatenate with the rest of the thing, you do uh, the AES, and you, know, you got your proof of vote. So it's really simple. So of course you can write a fake proof of vote uh, script. So here is mine, because it's a Python conference, so you should see some Python. Uh, so here you see, uh, I just generated a random SHA-512 uh, ashes. Uh, and so uh, if you do this, you go on the website, and uh, it doesn't work. Well, I mean. Uh, the, the NeoVot uh, website says uh, your proof of vote is, uh, is wrong. So, so far, so good. I mean, uh, maybe we don't go really far with this, but in fact, we do. Because what we are doing here is we are provided uh, a fake proof of vote, and we are checking it against the genuine ballot box. But NeoVot has no way to know if it's not the other way around. Maybe we have a genuine, a real proof of vote. And the ballot box has been tempered. And on the two sides, it's always the same check that is done, and there is no way to know which one is which. So what does it mean is anyone can generate a proof of vote and claim that his proof of vote doesn't check with the ballot box, and hence the election was rigged. And the other funny thing is anyone with a valid proof of vote who sees the organizer saying, oh, my proof of vote doesn't work, something is uh, fishy. Uh, the organizer can tell them, you're the one who generate a fake proof of vote. you fake news. Anyway, so now for uh, a real case studies, uh, Green Party election, there was uh, the person who arrived last, he, he really uh, couldn't believe it. So he said, uh, this is not right, the election might have been rigged. And so he, he went into justice for, for this. And uh, yeah, he, nothing could be proved, so uh, yeah, he, just, just lost this thing. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, so uh, there is this uh, quote from a, a researcher, which is called uh, Chantal Unger, uh, which is specialized in electronic voting. And uh, 
So uh, the idea is uh, the electronic voting industry, basically what they say is uh, electronic voting works great because nobody ever say that uh, there is an electoral dispute, there is issue. And uh, why is it so? It's simple, because there is no way to prove there is uh, something which uh, went wrong. So if you have physical evidence of the vote, it's much simpler to show something fishy is than if everything happened on a computer. Uh, so anyway, now we are going to see the voting website I showed you before. So basically, it's uh, like every uh, website, so it's minified, it's, uh, it's like that anyway. So you can un uh, unminify it, and uh, you have all those variables, you see that they have weird names that uh, get changed every time you reload the page, okay? But some of them are not minified, are not uh, really weird names, they stay there. So we can do a bit of uh, Google search, and GitHub search, and then we find a library which is called ASM Crypto, so it might be the one they use in the website, and it is, of course. Uh, here you can see uh, ASM Scripto uh, on the one side, the code from Neovot on the other, so it's pretty similar. Uh, now for the, the bad news is uh, ASM Scripto hasn't been modified since September 2020. Uh, of course, there is no security audit, so it doesn't seem the, the best library to do a really sensitive thing. Uh, but there is one thing that doesn't add up. It's, uh, as we will see, Neovot use uh, one type of encryption, which is uh, RAS, uh, PKCS, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and this precise uh, algorithm is not supported by ASM Crypto, the library. So they don't use uh, ASM Crypto. They use an unmerged pull request of ASM Crypto. Uh, yeah. So here is, for instance, uh, one part of the code. So same thing, uh, you see uh, the Neovot uh, code, the ASM crypto pull request, and so same code. Uh, so let's talk a bit about uh, ANSI. So ANSI in France is uh, the, the people which are responsible to say uh, what you should and should not do in terms of uh, computing security. So they are really, really great guy. Uh, who give really good advice when they say something, you should listen to them. And what they say is, you must really please use mature library, library that have written by experts, and you use library with security support. It's really important because it's really simple to have something which is broken in security, in cryptography, that you don't know that is broken. Uh, so anyway, let's talk about the ballot box format. Uh, as you saw in the, in the result page, uh, so the, the website you put it for, there is this uh, password that is provided. And uh, so with the password, you're supposed to decrypt the, the two archives. One is a ballot box and the other is ballot key. And if you decrypt the uh, ballot key on uh, Windows, there is uh, an error. If you, if you decrypt uh, not ballot key, but ballot box on Linux, there is an error. So why is it so? Someone knows? Tip, little advice? Tip? Yeah? Do you see it? Do you see it? Okay, yeah, of course. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the, the trouble is uh, if, you do, if you use your archive is a zip format. On zip format, they don't, speci they don't specify what will be the encoding. So if you use a uh, Unicode character, the encoding depends on your system. If you're on Linux, it will be uh, UTF-8. If you're on Windows, it most likely will be ISO. And uh, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's not great. Uh, anyway, the PHP script, he, he has to open both uh, archives. So how does it work? They try. They try to put encryption on top of it, and they try to put the other encryption, I mean, sorry, the uh, other encoding on top of it. And uh, after three tries, they should be fine enough. So, yeah. I wouldn't have done that this way, especially if you control the generation of the archive, the reading of the archive. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so maybe you're thinking like, uh, oh, uh, it's not big deal, it's small thing, it's not real security issue. So yeah, but it's not like that. I mean, uh, I was talking to you about the CNIL and uh, their recommendation. In their recommendation, what they say is it's important for third-party people to be able to read the ballot box. It's important for third-party people to write uh, independent software that could help checking the ballot box. And so basically, that's what I'm doing. And uh, for the presidential election, NeoVote was used by 700,000 voters. And basically, 
from what I understand, I'm the only guy working, uh, writing uh, third-party tools for this. So please, can we have a like, standard format, something that makes it simpler for people like me to write things that check? Uh, because on the, all the work I've done for, sorry, all the work I've done here on this thing, uh, this uh, encoding issue is the thing that took me the most time. So yeah, it could have been really avoided. Please, anyway. Uh, so yeah, uh, one more thing. I told you first there was no, absolutely no source code from Neobot, and then I told you there is this little uh, source code you can download, uh, and it's because uh, yeah, since uh, last time, I mean since the Green Party election, and since I sent them uh, the fact that all the, the finding I had, they removed the, the possibility to download the code. Great, transparency. Uh, anyway, what's in the archive? Uh, so there is this first uh, archive, which is about key export, uh, which contain uh, RSA uh, key, so a private key for doing decryption. Uh, the file is uh, .pm, which is a standard format for AES key, but it doesn't contain PM uh, key. So a little digression, what is PM? Uh, when you want to store, so basically uh, in RSA, your key, your key is a really big number if you want to store it. You store it in a format or in a format, uh, so which is called ASN1. So okay, anyway, and uh, this format you encode it inside a, a, in a binary format, which is called DER. Uh, but given this format is uh, binary, it's not really convenient. So basically, what you do is you put a header, you put a footer, you do a base64 encoding, and here it is. You got your PM key, and what Neobot does is they add another layer of base64 encoding because uh, why not? And uh, so it makes things a bit more complicated for me, for people like me writing certified tools anyway. Uh, so next thing, what's in the archive? You have, uh, so it is the other archive, the ballot box export one. Uh, what you have here is uh, multiple files which are not really interesting, like uh, the name of the election, something like that. And you have those two folder. Each folder is a, a round of the election. So this election, there was two rounds. That was, uh, that's why there is two folder. Uh, if we have a look at what's inside one of the folder, there is this thing, which is this file, which is called the object names, which contain uh, the ID of each candidate and the name of the candidate. So you see uh, here is the second round, so there is a two candidate and the, the white vote. Uh, and after that, there is uh, this comparam, which is another file which contains uh, the type of election, if, it's, if you have to vote for one person or multiple person. Uh, and finally, there is a the more interesting part, which is uh, this third file, which is called bad data. And it contained one line per vote that happened. And uh, we're going to see what it contained. So what you see here is there is the first part. And the second part is uh, SHA-512 of the first part. So the second part is the thing we saw in the, in the proof of vote. Uh, the first part, it's... Uh, RSA encrypted, and it contains uh, on the right side random uh, things, and on the left side it contains the ID of the candidate which has been voted for. Uh, now, little discretion because I said the thing is uh, encrypted with RSA, but you all know, of course, that you should never do um, textbook RSA, so you should not just use RSA, you should always use RSA with padding, and so there is different type of padding. Uh, and basically, there is a new Chinese one, which is uh, OREP and PSS, and there is the older one, which is called PKCS1, which is used by Neovot. And uh, what say NC about this is uh, basically it's obsolete, so you shouldn't use it for uh, newer software. Uh, okay, and so how does it work, PKCS? Uh, you have, when you encrypt something with RSA, your, uh, the thing you encrypt must be the same side of your key, so uh, in case uh, here, it's uh, 3,072 bits. Uh, and so with PKCS1, uh, you have a header, you have random stuff, which is a cryptographically secure random uh, bytes, and you have your message. Your message is what we saw. Uh, the funny thing is uh, the thing on the right, which is supposed to be uh, random, it's not cryptographically secure, it's just it's much less random that uh, cryptographically uh, secure thing. Uh, it's easy to see this because here you see, this is bytes still, this is bytes, and you see there is only printable characters. 
So basically what they do, they, get, they take uh, good randomly secure bytes and they do uh, some kind of cooking to turn them into something printable. I don't know why they need something printable, but anyway. And so it makes things less, uh, less random. So basically what they're doing is they're replacing this uh, cryptographically secure random bytes from uh, the PKCS uh, padding by something which is less random. I don't know why they do this, but not a very great idea, I guess. Uh, but it's not a security issue because PKCS is, uh, is well made and there must be, at the very least, eight uh, cryptographically secure random bytes. But anyway, it's still weird. Uh, oh, I'm already there. I, now I can start to slow down because uh, I thought it would be uh, much faster, uh, much slower. Anyway, uh, so we are going to, to have a bit of fun. So the, the ballot box we saw, there is no signature on it. Uh, we also saw that they gave us the RSA private key to do the decryption. Uh, we know all the vote ashes because they are inside the, um, the ballot box and uh, they are the ones which are used inside the proof of vote, the so-called proof of vote. Uh, so we can uh, try to, to tamper with the ballot box. Uh, yeah, so first thing we can do is, uh, you know, there is this file which is called object name where we saw uh, with the ID of the candidate and the name of the candidate. So really basic thing we can do is just modify this file. So we switch the name and we saw what happened. And so if we generate a new uh, ballot box and we uh, provide it to the official website that do the check and uh, you use the, the proof of vote uh, regular one, you see that everything is considered as valid. So uh, it's fine, except that now it's uh, the wrong candidate that uh, won. Uh, so it's a really, really basic attack, but it works. And uh, so the thing, if, uh, the, the very practical thing about this attack is you don't have to be a computing engineer. You don't have to do fancy thing. You just have to open a zip archive, modify two names, close the zip archive, and that's it, you're done. So it's really incredible, incredibly simple to do that. If you're a voter, it's really hard to see that something wrong went because you have your proof of vote, but remember, your proof of vote doesn't contain only the, the vote for who you voted for. It contains also other votes. So uh, you, you cannot see that uh, you voted for the wrong person because uh, the ID has been switched. Uh, I guess it's not really practical because what NeoVot can do is uh, take this file, which is uh, the file containing uh, the, the link between the ID and the name of the candidate, and they can just uh, share it and um, share it before the election with all the different parties. Say, okay, this ID is going to be this candidate. So if you do that, it's really simple to see that there is a switch that happened. I don't know if they, if they do any check, but uh, I suppose they do because there is no documentation about what they do, of course. Uh, so let's try something a bit more complicated, which is uh, given we have the private key, the private RSA key, we also have the public one. Uh, and so if we have the public RSA key, we can do encryption. And so we can start encrypting our own new ballot. We can generate new ballot as much as we want. So uh, yeah, we just have your, our ballot box, our archive, and we put plenty of new uh, ballot box, just enough so that uh, there is a difference of one vote before, between the two candidates, and so now the wrong candidate has win. Uh, so it works again. Uh, of course, this attack is much more visible because uh, the issue, as we saw here, is the number of ballots has changed because we have generated plenty of new ballots. So uh, if you look at all the people that were supposed to vote and all the ballots at the end, you see the number is different, so it's really easy to spot. Uh, but it's a funny attack. And now for the, the third attack, there is this file. Of course, you saw it. Of course, you were wondering what it was, and we are going to talk about this file. So the name is Extra Ashes. Uh, what does this file do? It's simple. Uh, when the script is checking for the, the ashes in your proof of vote, first thing you do is go inside this file, and it removes the, the ashes from your proof of vote, which are inside this file. 
So basically, this file is saying, okay, this, proof, this uh, ashes, yeah, don't, don't take care, don't care about it, just, just drop it. Uh, so my guess is why they do this is because when you are the very first person that go to vote uh, on the Neovot server, there is no other vote, but Neovot server has to send you back your, the, five, uh, ash, um, the, the five ashes to generate the proof of vote. And so what the Neovot server does is it generates four random ashes, store them in extra ashes, and so return you the ashes. Uh, anyway, so the funny thing is, now what can we do is generate uh, fake ballot like we do in the second attack. We put the fake ballot inside the file with all the ballots, but now we have too much ballots inside the, the file. So we remove some of the, of the genuine uh, ballot from the ballot, uh, ballot box for the ballot data file. Uh, and all those, um, all those ballots that have been removed, you can take their, uh, their ashes and you put the ashes inside the extra ashes.csv file. I mean, there was, 24, uh, there was 24 ashes in extra ashes. Now there is something like 5,000 or 10,000. What's the difference? Who knows? But the good thing is now you, you totally uh, change the result of the election. So everything's fine. Now uh, still uh, you have a, a difference of two votes between the, the first and the second one. And uh, yeah, everything is fine because you have the right name of vote. Uh, you have checked everything. Everybody has a valid proof of vote. Uh, everything appears like it should, but the only difference is you have too much uh, ashes in extra ashes, but nobody knows what this file does. So who can say it's wrong or right to have 5,000 or 24? Anyway. Uh, yeah, so as I said, all the, vote, all the proof of vote are valid. Uh, if you are an organizer, you, you just cannot know that if this attack, if this attack happened, you cannot have any way to, to check. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, if you wonder, of course, uh, given our, I give those information to Neovot, they answered. Uh, they say that all my attack are not, I'm not adding the official Neovot server. Of course, I, I'm doing this stuff on local, on my computer, I write my scripts. Uh, and so they said, uh, it's misleading what I'm saying because uh, I could not change the result of the election because uh, I could only change the file on my computer and the only uh, source of truth is the archive which is on the, the website, on the voting website, which is uh, hosted by Neovot. So I, I, I totally agree with them on this. Uh, what does it mean is as long as you trust the archive that is on the Neovot server, then the transparency script that you should run not to trust Neovot is working fine. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have time. We can say uh, what we saw today. So there is this uh, string versus byte uh, just mismanagement that remembers us uh, when we were doing Python 2. But uh, 2021, 2022 now. Uh, anyway, there is this encoding issue. There is this uh, symmetric encryption uh, used as padding stuff. Uh, this uh, random uh, bytes, which are not cryptographically secure random bytes, which, but which are added for God knows why. Uh, the use of legacy padding. Uh, of course, my favorite one, the use of uh, ASM crypto. Uh, pull request for doing uh, cryptography. Uh, and uh, the fact that we saw that when you do uh, the, um, the ballot box, uh, the proof of vote uh, checking on the website, the website crashes, but why it crashes? It's because we have a lot, a lot, a lot of ERISA decryption to do, and uh, it's costly. But what it means, if, if you are in an election, like uh, uh, what, I, what I show, an election with like 100,000 people, if you have one people that want to check his vote, the website is already down. So it's like people, they are supposed, I mean, you, you give them tool to say, ah, oh, you should check your, your vote, but if they try to do it, uh, things are crashing, things are not working great. 
uh, for instance, in, uh, in the Green Party, they were talking about this proof of vote and where you can uh, do the check for the next election, for the, the left-wing uh, party, uh, pre primary party election. Uh, they didn't talk at all about this voting proof, the fact, the fact you can check on the website. So when you end up voting, they say, oh, you can uh, check your vote at the end uh, with uh, this thing. And after that, at the end of the election, they don't give any information where you can do the check. And nobody seems to complain because nobody understands uh, how online voting works. So it's not really great for from us. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, if you're curious and you want to see uh, Mickey Mouse uh, win the election, you can try it yourself. Uh, I have put everything on GitHub. So you can uh, just uh, download the box, uh, try, change the thing. Uh, you can check against uh, the, the real um, ver uh, Verify website. Uh, as you can see, I had to change the password from the original archive because uh, I couldn't in Python uh, put the, the right uh, password with uh, all this encoding weirdness. And it's because uh, the zip uh, module in Python doesn't support the uh, encrypted archive. Uh, anyway. So I talked to you about uh, the CNRS uh, publication in, uh, in Algotel. Uh, if you're uh, French speaking, it's great. But if you're an English speaker, it's not great. But don't worry, there is a new conference coming, which is in Austria. And uh, there is a paper, and this paper is in English. And if you want to, to write the, um, the anonymized uh, preprint, you can. It's still done by uh, Enka, uh, which have done an incredible job on this. Uh, so if you're Austrian, you should check it. Uh, and uh, I think I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Amalia, for this very interesting talk. And it's always great to see that somebody looks at the security and then <laughs> is just surprised and presents this to us. Yeah. Because normally you would just trust these systems or just expect them to be trustworthy without having to check it yourself. We have time for some questions. So is, are there questions from the audience? If you have uh, a question about the security of the uh, uh, online voting, you can get quickly to the microphone here in front and ask a question. I see somebody already coming. So hello, please ask your question. Uh, hi, thank you for the very informative talk. Uh, I was just interested, did you manage to gain interest uh, for some like interested actors uh, like from the uh, I don't know, I don't want to say government, but people who are in charge, actually, of making such systems. Like uh, yeah, so as I told you, uh, from, uh, from what I understand, from a, a legal point of view, uh, what Neovot is doing is fine. I mean, uh, there cannot be, don't quote of me on this, because uh, I'm basically the man in the street when I'm saying that, but what I understand is, uh, they cannot be uh, sued or anything for what they're doing, I guess. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think my finding are interesting, so uh, I send them to Neovot so they can uh, react. And after that, because they didn't react, I send also them to uh, the CNIL I told to you about, and uh, the NC, so the guy which are responsible to say uh, what you should and shouldn't do in security. Uh, so now they know, uh, they do something or not, it's uh, what they want. Uh, and anyway, we are doing a publication with the, with the CNRS, with NCA, so uh, that's uh, the most we can do. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question, please. Hi. Thanks for the interesting talk. Uh, I just wanted to ask a simple question. Uh, what is your background? What did you study to be able to understand all of this? Uh, so I I'm mostly doing um, software development. Uh, and uh, what I do is uh, what I show you on the very first slide that uh, you should go check. Anyway, uh, so it's like I'm using crypto, but I'm not a mathematician. I'm not developing crypto. I stay as far away as I can from uh, crypto because I just want to have a well thought API. Like uh, if you do crypto, you should use uh, uh, Lipsodium, if you know it. It's uh, basically the, the good way to do crypto. And uh, so I'm just a regular computing engineer. I'm just curious. And uh, so you, you saw uh, on, the pie, on, the, on the page uh, when you check the, the vote, there was, you can download the source code. So you get curious, you download, you read the code, you say, mm, I could, uh, 
and then you just follow the flow of the script and, uh, and you see what happened. And the sad thing about that is, as I saw, now they removed the download the source code. So imagine if they, from the beginning, haven't put this download source code, uh, I would not be here talking about this. They could get away with it. I mean, the, uh, all, the, all the things that's uh, inside this conference, uh, nobody would, could know because everything is closed. Thanks. Uh, next question, please. Hello, thanks for the talk. It was really, really cool to see that. Uh, I'm French too, so I can relate. Uh, do you know of any trustworthy state-of-the-art system that could be trusted by government and citizens to perform online voting and which is hopefully open source and transparent and everything? Uh, yeah, basically, I mean, basically, uh, when you're talking about online voting, you already, I mean, you're already too far. Uh, if you want to do voting, uh, I mean, there is two ways to do voting. There is one way, which is uh, you care about uh, secrecy, and then you have to do physical voting. And the other thing is you don't care about secrecy. I mean, it's possible. Uh, if, you're, if you're voting for something that is not really important, you can say, okay, let's vote, and we can all be clear about it. We just uh, raise a hand, or we vote online on a poll software or anything. I mean. It's a, it's a legitimate use case, and at least uh, it's really clear that the thing is open. Uh, if you do online voting, it's like of a grayish uh, thing. Uh, so for instance, I was talking about one researcher, uh, Chantal Unger. She, she does a, a lot of research on this thing, and uh, what I understood, she told me, uh, I understood that, so I'm not an expert, um, is when there is a switch, uh, people were using physical, um, physical voting, and then the switch for uh, online or electronic voting, uh, people are not voting the same. There is more people voting before that when you have to do something physical, maybe people are lazy, they don't go. There, there are more people voting. Uh, most of the time it's because uh, even if it's electronic voting, people have to go to the company to vote. So of course you don't say, oh no, I'm not going, uh, I'm going to have a cigarette. No, you go with everybody. Uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, when they vote, they vote differently. Because uh, when you are in a company uh, and you have, you have uh, your political opinion, so you want to vote for something, but you know the, the election is held by the company and you don't know how much you can trust the computer, the software, the et cetera, et cetera. And st you start by uh, going a bit like, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe it's just easier to, to temper a, a bit what I think and uh, uh, be sure I won't lose my job, something like that. So yeah, if you want to do good voting, uh, just do physical voting. Okay, we have time for one quick more question. Pluto, please ask your question. Hi, uh, great talk, thanks. Uh, quick question, I'm a data engineer, so in my job I have access to really big databases, I see your personal data, yeah. and my company trusts me not to do anything illegal with it, yeah. uh, or else I go to jail. Um, how much do you trust new vote developers to you know, respect an election and not skew the votes? Is there any way to know that uh, the current people who ran for the election did, not, did or did not actually win? Yeah, your question is kind of the the, the complot theory or something like that. <laughs> I, I would say that uh, as long as there is no proof, you don't have to, you don't want to put a shadow and say, yeah, they may be doing, they may be not. No, I mean, uh, what I believe is they're honest. They, they don't want to, to temper the, the election. And uh, it would be really foolish to do that, of course, because it's not, I mean, they are making money with this software, so they don't want to, to kill uh, the milking cow. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they are doing a, uh, an honest job. They don't try to change things or anything. But uh, it's not, I mean, the, there is so many layers, so many different people who can do something. I mean, if tomorrow uh, there is a, I don't know, insert a big country with uh, hackers that uh, understand that uh, there is this software which is more and more used for, do, for doing voting. Uh, maybe it's interesting to put enough energy in uh, hacking this thing and they go inside the server 
and uh, they, they understand how to uh, rewrite the zip archive with uh, these encoding issues to change the vote about box, and uh, now uh, they've changed the election and no one can know anything about it. Or maybe later on you realize that, oh, this election, uh, there was a uh, hacking things, and maybe the election, uh, the result has changed, and what can you do? Or maybe there is nothing that happened. I mean, uh, everything is fine, but just uh, you have, uh, like uh, Donald Trump, he uh, said the election is rigged, and uh, how can you prove the election is not rigged, given everything is done on a computer, you don't have a lot of physical evidence. So, even if everybody, everybody is perfectly honest, it's still an issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for all the questions, and thanks again for the talk. So let's have another round of applause for, for Emmanuel.